Okay, um, so let's get started with today. Um, the only announcement I have for today is um, that where's my plan? Um, is that Portrait Studio is on sale. So what is Portrait Studio? It's a software you can build your references with. Um, it lets you build anything. Um, and we are in the progress of sending out some updates um, and uh, adding more asset variety in Portrait Studio. Um, quick little message uh, for you guys. If you go on my videos and comment like a complete asshole with no manners, demanding we reply to an email you never sent us, complaining about our shitty customer service, even though people across the board have been talking about our wonderful customer service. Um, we're not going to reply to you. We have no reason to reply to you. We have no reason to entertain your rudeness or disrespect. There is nothing obligating me to reply to you in any single way at all if you talk to me or my team like that. Um, learn your manners, learn how to use email, type out your email, so learn how to use a keyboard, um, and keep it together to try to stay calm, and we will most likely get back to you. Everyone who's ever requested uh, uh, help through my form submissions um, has been replied to. Why? Because they go directly to my email, which I monitor daily. Um, no, they don't get into the spam folder because it's Squarespace. No, nothing like that. If I didn't get your email, and Abu and I have shared emails, if I didn't get your email or Abu didn't get your email, there's no way that that is possible since both of us watch the same inbox. So if one slips through the crack, the other sees it. Um, it is because you wrote your email wrong in the form submission. To limit spam, I do a CAPTCHA and I do a um, written out email. There's no email test to determine whether or not your email exists if you did a typo on it. It means that that's, that's the reason why I did not receive it or Abu did not receive it. Both my email and Abu's email are linked to the Square, Squarespace customer service submissions. So have some respect. Don't ever fucking talk to me or Abu like that or any members of my team. And if you have any manners at all, um, you'll, you'll, you'll change your behavior. I don't owe you anything. You bought from my store. You bought a, an online product. You, you lost it. And that is your responsibility. There is no obligation at all for me to give you all redownload links for a portable software. Um, that's the, that's the, that's, that's what comes with portable softwares and other softwares like this. We give it out as a courtesy, um, because we are human beings and not robots. And those who lose their computers for some reason and lose everything and don't back things up, um, it happens and we are kind and we are, um, uh, uh, very merciful about it. Um, so it is a courtesy, have some respect and, uh, learn to treat people a different way because if you're a narcissistic asswipe, you're going to be treated with, with the same respect you, you, you show to us, which is zero. Anyway, um, uh, let's get started on today's class. So <laughs> this piece, um, is like, it's two different paintings. Why? Let me show you. Let me show you really quickly. There's one painting there, and there's one painting there. What you could do is do a painting crop just like this, but then you still have a really awkward split down the middle that doesn't help anybody. Um, and then you also put a really cool uh, window right behind her, uh, which you could have made, uh, like beside her, which you could have made right behind her. So that the crop is a little bit better, but let's say that you really want a horizontal landscape. This landscape's too long, by the way. Um, you're you're not really showing that much landscape. Um, you're just pretty much showing a character in a natural environment. It's a portrait that's a little bit more advanced at this stage. Um, so one thing you could do is carry her over so that she's sitting on the edge, because what you need to do is unite this side and this side together. So, um, so let me see if I could lasso it. All right. Hey, I'm a careless idiot and I want to punish people for my carelessness. Let me 
email really quickly the developers of the software um, who are known and respected members of our leaders of our community with a disrespectful email um, and uh, and berate them with insults and, and rude and rude speech and let's see if they get back to me baby they're gonna get back to me right they're get they're gonna get back to me Oh, they're gonna get they're gonna give me exactly what I want because this is how I talk to people on a daily basis nope that's not how it works around here and if you want to be trained like a doggy and you want to be um, given positive reinforcement negative reinforcement all that stuff I will do that I will I will I will talk to you the way you talk to me and get a newspaper and slap you on the nose with it <clears throat> because you don't you don't talk to people like that and that pissed me off so what I'm doing here is I am showing how this character could be sitting on the edge of this rock. So this character unites both ends of the uh, of the painting, and I think it looks better this way. But in order for me to do that, I have to um, fix this little thing. So lately, I have been uh, getting back into my map painting days. I've been doing a lot of it lately. And it took me a while to kind of ease back into it, but it has been hella fun. I know OBS disconnected for a quick second, so I had to keep talking because the recording is fine. It's just the stream for some reason gets disconnected. Um, so just to show you really quickly, when you have the character sitting on the edge like that, it actually looks much better. That's one option. This is just one option of the many that you have at your disposal. You could bring in the, the, the stained glass right behind her. And I'll show you that one in a second because I feel like that one looks better and feels better. And um, I did the stone wrong. The stone tapers, so every other stone... It's not, uh, it doesn't work like that. So you have this kind of set up right here, right? The character in there. And I'm going to ignore the little rabbit because it's, it's just in the way at this point. It's just an additional secondary character. It's not breaking or making the illustration. All right, and then you miss the cast shadow down here. So you could do something like this where you've united both, but you still have this awkward stained glass at the edge just doing nothing, looking pretty and doing nothing. This is probably the best part of your painting. So if you had to have it length longwise on the horizontal canvas, you can you can keep it like this. Um, or or you could just do what I wanted to do originally, which is um, Actually, I can just do it right now. Place the character here and bring that stained glass behind her and let that light shine in. All right, so flip horizontal. Oopsie. Um, okay. Flip horizontal. And I'm going to just try to complete the picture of a stained glass right here. Maybe I will erase with a lasso. All right, and then I'm going to um, do that. There are a lot of things that annoy me about this painting, which are the same things that annoy me about any of the other issues that um, I see in what I very amorously, is that the word? Um, what's the word? Uh, very loving, lovingly referred to as noob mistakes or beginner mistakes. The beginnerness of this painting comes from the fact that you sometimes you guys honor your character design and the choices you make for the characters above the light environment. Which is extremely, you know, for just it's just it's obnoxious when when an artist avoids or ignores the environment around the character. It's because they treat the character as themselves. 
So it's 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 a sign that they have not yet matured into the notion that I don't matter, my opinions don't matter, my opinion of physics doesn't matter, my opinion of this character's importance doesn't matter. It, the world comes first, and then the character. Um, that way, you can actually give your character some a valid stance, you know, on which to exist, because then the the world around them existed, making them exist more. I know it sounds like I'm talking in riddles, but this is just to, you can start changing the way you think. My character needs a world to exist, and then my character can come along and tell their story. So what does that refer to? It refers to the fact that her skin is green, her dress is blue. She's in a shadow, a full shadow of a rock, in a rock wall or, you know, a brick wall in a very uh, dimly lit sunrise or dawn or sunset scene. I think it was sunrise or was it sunset? I forget what the blurb said. Um, you know, like you put the, you, none of these colors have any kind of response to the light environment, uh, which is when you start treating the environment, the, the landscape as just a simple background. No, no, the environment is, will always be dominant over your character. You, the, the environment decides, once you decide on an environment, you have set a set, a set of rules that you cannot break no matter what for anything. Um, and these sets of rules, they, they are deciding on the color, deciding on the, 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 the narrative, the mood. They decide everything. You choose a sunset, a high noon, um, or a dusk, which is similar to sunset, but can be a bit different. And um, nighttime, these are completely different plot points in storytelling. These are completely different stories. It's completely different everything. Um, so when we're looking at a character in a sunrise scene that is in the shadow of this uh, you know, this dark side of, of the, the morning, kind of, it's like morning values, but not yet. You don't get to make this character have this iridescent kind of pure green on their face. The blue doesn't have anything to feed it. Blue is strong. It stays pretty blue and light in, in, in a dark environment, but even then it shouldn't be this intense. So what I'm going to do is match all these colors. So today it's, it's mostly about showing you guys you need to change the way you think about your character. You need to change the way you think about what, how important your character is. They're not more important than the laws of physics that govern the character's world. And that's, as soon as you start understanding that, that's when your art will start looking realistic. So what I'm gonna do is um, start color correcting everywhere, actually, uh, because this is a sunrise scene then it means we have a lot of purple, a lot of gold, and a lot of purple still in the sky. Um, and so I'm going to bring in that gold here, and then I'm going to bring in the gold of the sunset. So yeah, I've been messing around a lot with map painting, and it's actually been pretty fun. Um, this cast shadow is going in the wrong direction now. So I'm not actually sure where the sun is coming from. Maybe the sun is coming from behind, which will be much better. Maybe the sun, yes, is, is rising behind the character. So I'm going to go ahead and do the first and most important thing about this scene, which is letting some of that light shine through on top of the character. And then the character herself, she's going to have a lot more rim light happening on the back of her neck along with the colors of the stained glass. So the stained glass is gonna throw a bunch of colors on her shirt. There's gonna be a limit to where the light can reach because it's a, it's a ray, it's coming from something. Um, so it could, it could shoot up ideally because, uh, why aren't you working? I don't understand. Why aren't you working? All right, there we go. It could shoot up because the light is coming from behind the mountain, but if, if it just creates a perfect circle around her, that's fine too. And the rim light can be a lot more gentle. But there is much more color correcting to be done. I'm gonna desaturate the green of her face. 
I get it. You liked your green character very much. But it doesn't matter because nobody cares about the fact that your character is green. People care about the world of your character that you built, that the character is introducing us to. A character doesn't just walk around in a white room while you tell their story. No, they walk around in a, a, a world that matches the fantasy portrayed on the character. So this character is a fantasy character of some kind. Um, they have some kind of magical element. They're a princess of something. They're kind of an ogre troll thing, but also pretty and ladylike and elf-like. So a little bit of both. Why not? And, um, and this world around them is also just as magical as they are. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to start, uh, breaking some rules. And these are rules I can break just because uh, of what's happening around the character here. So maybe there is a little bit of light on the ground. And I'm just putting that there to remind me that I can bounce the light on the character's body. And then I'm gonna get soft brush on the, just like a purple, just like that purple that I started with. And I'm going to ash it up a bit with black. And I'm just going to start darkening anything in this zone here. And I could bring back what's missing. Anything in this zone that is getting neither direct, indirect sunlight or direct light through the, through the stained glass. And I will throw in the silhouette. All right. Because, again, I want to emphasize it to you as much as possible. Nobody cares about the fact that your character is green. That's not what makes people say, wow. Have you ever looked at a painting and been like, wow, that character's green? <laughs> I've never done that before. What I do say is, holy shit, that character looks so beautiful against that stained glass, the light against the thing. That's what people, that's what sticks with them. That's what has people remember your gallery. You put the world of the character first. All right. So nobody, nobody uh, 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 measures a character's worth by their character. Everybody and their mom has an original character. But nobody really ha loves their characters that much or not, not a lot of people really love their characters enough to build. An entire environment around them so you must really love your character very much and this is the missing quality in your work at the moment is that you are still favoring the character's characteristics um, and not really the environment so I just want to and like I said this is the best rendered bit you have you didn't render anything as good as you rendered this it looks really effing good here on that stained glass and so put those two put those two characters together put those two elements sorry together and let them complement each other all right and then some things you could start doing is just sneaking in a bit of subsurface scattering on this on the sleeve and then i will bring in the uh the light environment a bounce light on the rest okay and then I'm just gonna cast this shadow here and then there's what the characters look at what's she looking at what's she looking at and why is it why are you doing it because it's inviting the viewer to look away from the painting which is not a good thing all right what's she looking at why is she looking in that direction stop posing your characters as if they're Instagram models it doesn't look good all right, and she seems a bit too happy, a bit too uh, plain in the face. There's really nothing going on with the character. Or maybe something a little bit more along the lines of princess. Um, caught in thought, you know, she's just thinking. And so. Something a bit more like that. Get rid of those eyebrows and that smile. Okay. 
And then you could you could keep the smile. Um and you could make her eyes a little bit more closed. Maybe she's just enjoying the summer, enjoying the breeze. I don't want her to look bored, but um maybe a bit more gentle a smile. A bit more at peace, really, not just not bored, but at peace. Before it looked a little bit too peaceful. You know, it looked a little bit like cliche, just smiling, staring at nothing. But here she is enjoying the summer. She's caught in a moment where she's thinking and she doesn't know how beautiful she looks. That kind of, of, of uh, filming, let's say. I don't know what she's doing with her hand. Um, I, I, I don't know at all. Uh, it looks, it looks like she's doing something, but I don't feel like it's that important. So what I'm going to do is just make it so that her sleeve is kind of that way. And she's just doing a little lean that will kind of, um, complete the pose a little bit. As well. And then this way, her silhouette opens up and uh, we can actually start looking at the character properly. And we could reveal some more of the light directly behind her, which will really help because some of that light might touch her skin. And oh my lord, it looks wonderful. Um, so if I lost some of her hair, you could bring it back if you really have to show that she's got long hair. Okay, and we would still have that room light climbing up. And it's still looking a little like it's two different paintings, but at least now um, some of that light is behind her and I'll take care of what's happening with the brick. I might just, just you know, break up this brick wall so that more of the environment and her shirt and her dress and all of that starts connecting with it. She just has to touch the background somehow. Um, okay, well, I'll just do that now then. Um, I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. So let me, let me, let me, let me try to do it. Um, how am I gonna do this? I'm gonna. All right, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me do this. Oh, I see. I see. Oh, I see. All right, sorry. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, it was just an experiment. It's not for sure if I want to keep it, but just to see if, if we want to do it. It's just too close to the stained glass. It's kind of destroyed the frame of it. Um, We'll, we'll think of something else. We just have to combine her with the background. There, there has to be something else we could do. Um, so I'm going to bring this down, connect that down. The green of her dress, is, uh, the green of her skin is taken down a bit, which is good. Um, we're going to bring direct white light. It's sunlight, so it's direct white. <clears throat> All right, so have weird lassos all around so bear with me when I clean up so quick reminder please make sure you follow me on Instagram if you want to join uh, the daily sketch challenges I find really cool references from time to time um, and I just, they're just so inspiring. There's something so cool about them that I would love for you guys to see as well. So I started hosting a daily sketch challenge. You could do any, you could draw with crayons as long as it gets you drawing and going. 
um, and I and I post them on my stories on Instagram, which is much much more easy for me to just keep posting daily stuff without. It's not really spam if you post it on stories, you know what I mean? It's not like it's a post, it's just a story post, which is a lot easier for people to follow and keep track with, and it's kind of separate from my gallery. So it's, my my gallery is mostly where I do posts, or my my, my, my posts are mostly for my gallery, and um, stories are great for that. So that's, other than the YouTube stories, which I've been trying to use, and YouTube community posts, um, Instagram stories are just the best way to manage a day-by-day -day sketch challenge. So if you want to follow me there, you can. You're allowed. I mean, you can right now. You can just go right now to Instagram and look up Mr. Rack and follow me there. Um, all right. So I'm, I don't want to do too much outlining because it's not about that. Um, but it's enough that it shows that there's that rim that halo around her shining through and then of course baby of course we're gonna bring in that soft light so i'm just gonna use it on soft light and just create that bloom it's really important to have this bloom i'm actually going to be more cautious and use it section by section on the glass a little bit behind her ears a little bit over here actually I'm just gonna use the dodge tool dodge dodge sound <laughs> and um, and then I, I would love if you went back to each of these leaves and darkened them let me see oh my gosh lasso is such a good girl today all right we're in business all right, so I'm going to dodge, I mean, darken the lasso tool, darken the leaves a little bit more. And then the leaves aren't going to be pure green in every area. They're going to be a little bit more blue in some areas. So just because, you know, where there is no light, there is no yellow. And then the leaves out here that are catching the sunlight get more yellow but they get back into green that's darker the closer and further they get so see that we're creating these really beautiful variations and then some leaves some are favored by god <laughs> and they get a lot more oops wrong tool they get a lot more leave a lot more sorry light on the leaves than any others So it should probably not have deselected. I could have just painted it in. No, nope, that's too much. So just some of the leaf this way. This one maybe got a lot of light piercing through it. And I'm gonna continue desaturating her outfit. And now I'm going to bring in the final piece of the puzzle, which is the uh, the bounce light. The not the bounce. It's mostly like the um, the indirect light coming out of the grass, out of the sky, out of the everything around her. Alrighty, and that is going to be brought in. I'm just going to choose the sky color itself, and this gets to sit anywhere it wants so over here and I'm being I'm being generous right now but I will erase away based off the clash of the light environment behind the brick wall and the rest and this is this is only bounce light and I'm gonna throw a little bit of extra bounce light that's yellowish all right yellowish on the bottom of her of her uh, dress right here because that's some of the light is on the ground nearby so you get this beautiful terminator light terminator shadow right there so i'm going to zoom out all the way just so i know i'm not damaging any environments and i'm gonna apply that and um you can fix all of this dress stuff that I messed up, all of that. And uh, as for uniting the piece, 
or uniting her because the thing is she's not, she's beside a wall and the background is behind her other than using light environment so we brought in the us unite we've already united her with the background and bringing the window behind her and using some of that daylight behind her but one thing we could do and we brought in the bounce light here to, again to connect those two together and united both but we want some of her to kind of lean into the background somehow so it, this is a bit cheap it's a kind of a cheap trick it's always a cheap trick to use some kind of prop to serve a fundamental purpose I, it's kind of tricky to, to word it it's cheap to use clothing of a character or a character's wand or a character's hair to fulfill a scientific fundamental purpose of physics or composition or cinema. It's too flimsy a subject matter to use the cloth only as the thing that's uniting her with this, the other half of the canvas. Um, this manifests in different ways across different illustrations. Um, so we want her body part to come out here, to, 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 to be out in this, in this section, which is not possible at the moment because I don't want to damage the piece. But we could play around with the architecture. I mean, there's no reason why the window can't be cut off like that. Um, so, you know, just like an oddly shaped little window with maybe a pillar. Just something like this, where the window is shaped like that. That could be a nice way to clean up the scene so that part of her body is visible on the background values and we still get to see a lot of shadow and it lets in a little bit more balanced light or indirect light from the environment around. You have to do a lot of cleanup for this to be, to be possible. So I suggest um, you look up some references and stuff. I'm going to clean up this little mess here. Let some of that it like this yeah it's really cheap because it's not a, an actual valid structural change that's why I didn't opt for just the dress leaning over um, uh, we have to make a real surgical decision to uh, to to you know to make this work um, all right so let me merge those down and clean that up And then now that I can, I can resaturate anything that is getting that indirect light because now it's kind of like enough time or enough light has passed through in this area. This um, part of her dress is still in shadow. So, it, you know, her, her, um, the lower part, her pants. So it feels like I should be, even when it makes no sense to have a cast shadow, it always looks good to have some kind of, see that? It makes nothing's casting this shadow. It just looks good there. That's a quick lesson on cast shadows, how awesome they are. But maybe we could darken her pants just a little bit more just so she stays inside that scene, but leave the balance light for the lower portions and then bring in some balance light up here. Um, and I have cropped away some stuff, so like that. And there are other poses you could try. Um, there are other ways you could, you know, emphasize her princessness but also, you know, being secluded. So maybe she's elegant in the way she's sitting, but the character doesn't always have to face the camera. She could be looking out into the distance. Stuff like that can really save a painting. No, this is all wrong. What the hell am I doing? Um, I'm just trying to show some grooves. Double zero grooves. Oh, Satara is here. I was just wondering whether or not you were going to be here today. <laughs> Thank you for coming. I was 
like, shit, I forgot to ask him to mod for me. All right. And um, because of this whole thing, all of this was for the sake of making her unite with the background, I'm going to use the background color and really push that atmospheric perspective um, and fail. I'm going to try again. <laughs> And um, I'm going to fail again. So what I'm trying to do, and Dodge Tools being a little about it, is I'm just trying to show this light peaking. I'm almost going to push it to white just by juxtaposition, just by her arm being that point of relief right there. Um, and then I'm going to continue to be a bit more careful with the with this lower corner of the entire painting. So just as if this lower corner of the painting stays true to the environment, which is stays dark, and we have this dark versus light and this character who's kind of in the dark a little bit. If we have this, you know, it'll work better for her. So now that I'm zoomed out, actually, I can see there's great benefit to uh, that mosquito light. Those sons of bitches feast on me like, like a buffet, like a Chinese buffet. Alright, so now that I'm zoomed out, I actually just want to do something like that. Sometimes zooming out answers a lot of questions. I, I'm not sure if I want to take this one all the way up. And then I will grab that yellow. Yellow and use it on the rim. So yeah, lately I've had absolutely zero tolerance for disrespect, for um, for, for for any kind of negligence in the, in, like, you know, when it comes to respect, any, any even the 1%. I've just had it with people. And um, if you, if you, talk to me or my mods or Abu or you know, anybody who's or any 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 member of this community really the disrespect you're out you're not replied to you're ignored the world's going through way too much for your tiny little problems to be worth insulting someone over because we're all dealing with something and we st we haven't insulted anyone in the process of dealing with it the only one here who seems entitled enough to insult others is you. So back off or, you know, or learn how to speak to people. Um, I don't want to, since the sleeve is puffy, it makes sense to do that, but I don't want to do that. I only, I only clean that part up here just because I want to sneak in a little bit more sneaky light right down here, which is really going to make her. So yeah, we're all treating each other pretty courteously on my Instagram. I'll go to the extent of, you know, now I'm putting in soft light, just kind of coming down. You know, arguing with, you know, debating real world events and subjects like Islam and all kinds of, with, with absolute respect. Everyone's respecting everyone. And along comes this guy and it's the most disrespectful email I've ever received. And another one extremely disrespectful comment demanding help with portrait studio doesn't work for me i am intellectually challenged and i don't know how to te technologically challenged and i don't know how to anyway and um Ka karen decided to speak disrespectfully about us so karen's zero zero tolerance for karen's and uh I'm sorry if your name is Karen. I don't know. I'm so, I'm so sorry that the meme chose your name. One day somebody will choose us to rock for a meme and I'll get my fair share of meme memeage on my name. I really feel sorry for all the nice ladies who are named Karen. But <laughs> but right now the world needs you, Karen. The world needs someone to blame, Karen. <laughs> Just let us blame you for a little bit. We'll forget about you soon. <laughs> don't go creating a coalition of Karens because that's just how you make it last. All right, so I'm just trying to clean up a little bit more here, just making this 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 little sleeve area make sense. 
and um, almost done. So I brought in that soft light behinder and I'm just cleaning up a little bit more, showing where the base is of the of where she's sitting, showing how the fabric is um, drooping and draping over. Ugh, that was bad. Maybe a little bit, a little bit more like that. Yes. Okay, and then um, oh, snap converse. I'm sorry if you've been hearing the traffic this whole time. I live. Oops, don't want to delete that. I live right beside a. It's not a highway, but it's a busy road. <sighs> and uh, gets pretty noisy. Okay, so as for the majority of this like environment out here, everything is just clustered into one section. So it wouldn't kill you to throw in like a little tree over here. Um, it wouldn't kill you. So throw that little tree here. It's not a little tree. It's actually a really strategically placed tree. That's it's a, it's a strategic CIA tree, <laughs> and it's it's doing it's doing the job. It's doing two jobs. It's connecting those two halves of the painting together uh, even more. You know, so we have this space here that I did with the brick, and we have agent tree over here, strategic, and you could have it have a little bit more just to show that maybe we're we're panning and filter blur this is just an option um gaussian blur you know and do a couple more here and there just uh it reminds me a lot of sleeping beauty the the um the opening credit to sleeping beauty one of my favorite all-time disney movies the style just the way they manage the style throughout the entire piece so you can see a lot of style change between characters and environments and like Cinderella or Snow White, but Sleeping Beauty was dead on. I don't know who, I don't know why, but the style was continuous. It's just perfection. It's just the way they did the features and the edges and the, and the features as well as the edges and the trees. It was, it was all just synced and I love it. But um, anyway, uh, so watch that movie if you haven't already. I don't know if you've heard about it, <laughs> but um, but the, the opening scene, the way all those trees pan as the character, um, as we're, as we're, I think she's outside or I forget. Um, was it just, yeah, yeah. It was just an environment panning before we saw either the prince or, or Aurora. But, um, watch that movie. I recommend it. Just for that opening credit, just for the style management. It's so beautiful. They just don't make them like that anymore. Hell, they don't even make Disney movies the way they did five years ago. It's It keeps changing. Something is happening. And then I'm throwing a little bit of light uh, above her seat as well. So remember, this this ninja tree is, is not necessarily, you know, permanent. But the fact that we blurred it is helping a great deal. And if you have anything else in the foreground that you want to blur, you can do that as well. Um... It still wants it still wants me to add strategic tree. Got it. <laughs> it was a single artist who did paintings like that in his spare time. Uh, Walt loved his work, so they made him like the art director of the movie. Makes sense. It was a single artist, meaning that his style was continuous throughout, which looks like it was a single artist. I will go and check it out. Yeah, I recommend it. It's you might not have you might not find it online. I don't know. You might find it on this website, hardly visited Disney.com. Disney.tv. I don't know what it is. Um, I don't know if you've heard about Disney though. They're kind of like a small studio in Japan. <laughs> it was because Walt wanted to capture the style of Mary Blair, who was a concept artist at Disney at the time. She made a bunch of stuff for all his movies, but he felt like her style was lost. Um, FBI tree open up, <laughs> but but it's like a creaking tree. You know how a tree sometimes taps on a window. <laughs> so, so it's not a knock. It's more like you know, like a tree branch hitting. <laughs> FBI tree, open up. 
Um, oh, and I mean Predator. I'm an alien versus Predator. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm getting sidetracked. Um, let's take a look at the before and after. Lots of changes today. Um, oh, oh, oh. One more thing is the light that bounced off from beneath her. Now... <laughs> This <laughs> is the FBI, I hope not. Um, is is kind of hovering and humming down here. See, because it fell on the ground. All right, light doesn't just, you know, land and that's it. it makes camp and 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 uh, and goes to bed. It continues to bounce everywhere until it runs out or becomes too dispersed for us to see and becomes ambient occlusion or something. Um, so right here, this glow here. It's not, a, it's not really optional because it's falling on some kind of stone or grassy surface or something like that. And um, that's it really. Let's take a look at the before and after. Big changes. I tried to keep your horizontal canvas as much as possible. But um, at the end of the day, it's not about, you know, it's not about your character. I barely touched your character. Your character is not important. It's about the environment so before so I did crop quite a bit I can't uh, I can't do a copy paste before because I cropped the canvas I believe unless I didn't before after right so we've combined the two halves of the painting together now we can have a longer canvas and before there was just two separate paintings and you had the beautiful stained glass. Like I don't even work like that with my stained glass. Like if I ever had stained glass, I wouldn't even work that hard on it. I don't even know how you did it. You did like a vector thing. You brought it in and used fill tool to like, come on, man. He did such a good job and he threw it off to the most unimportant got you know forgotten pit of death, which is the edges of the canvas. You know, nobody looks at those. Nobody cares about those. Um, so we brought it back forward here. Oh, we did lose some saturation. It's not something I miss, but I'll bring it back just to honor your decisions here. So you can bring back that saturation. Um, before, when you see she's looking at something, what's she looking at? Who cares what she's looking at in that direction? Change how the actress is working. Make her look at the environment she's a part of. All right. That's what's going to work. And once you do her hand gesture, and then you can make her little bunny rabbit thing struggling to get up. That's also cute. But, um, but, uh, it wasn't really visible since it was in the dark side. It's, 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 it's a, I wouldn't put that character in there. I just put him in there kind of like chilling, smelling the breeze, you know, like right here. Um, it's not a funny uh, shot. It's not like a candid shot. It's more like a, an establishing shot. And then you have the little League of Legends <laughs> icon right over here. I don't know. League of Legends does not look this peaceful. So the little creature could be sitting, you know, like a cat. And just um, smelling the environment. It's not a duck, it's the rock. All right, and I'm just going to give a random color just to show you. You can have the little character sitting. What the fuck is that? Did I even? Anyway, just to show you where you could place it. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Uh, quick announcements before I let you guys go. If you want your work submitted for Critique Gallery. So someone submitted this work. And I brought it in to critique today because they joined the Reddit community. So istabrak.com, Reddit community, that's the little Reddit icon right here. This is the main hub. This is our this is our gateway into better art. This is the world of improvement right here. People here are amazing. The critiques they give each other are wonderful. Um, there's such mature artists uh, live here, and I'm so proud of the the kind of artists i've attracted into this community i'm very proud of you guys uh, eight, of all ages of all age groups but they all really do care about you getting better and they all really do care about um they're they're getting better uh so th it's important to be a part of a community that encourages critique because critique is discussion and a lot of our egos are intertwined with our creative um endeavors so obviously so you know, me talking about this person's character here, how it's not important. You know, your character design and your little 
oh, original character is not important. That's an important lesson to learn is that not everything I create is so important it needs to break the fundamental rules in an illustration. It's a sense of humility that you learn, a humility enough to learn the fundamentals. You know what I'm saying? And that is what you learn through critique. You start to realize, hey, we're all on the same side and we're all here worshiping at the altar of science. Um, so it's it's really a very, very awesome experience getting critique, improving all that stuff. It could take your art to levels you never thought possible just because someone informed you of this fundamental that, 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 you, that you didn't necessarily catch on your own. Um, and there's some stuff people critique on these, like on this piece that I don't, I didn't catch myself. Um, so it's not like, oh, don't only important if I get a critique from Instagram. No, you guys can critique each other in ways that I would not have been able to either. So just time or my scope is limited. Um, and then if you guys are improving and you guys are enjoying and, and learning something from this uh, class, please join me on Patreon. Even if you join as just a dollar patron, it lasts. In fact, I want dollar patrons more than I want $20 patrons because dollar patrons last longer um, and they keep the community stable and independent for a lot longer. Um, this past year has been hard for me and this past, the past two years have been extreme, like extremely hard in the past year and the last two years have been extremely challenged health-wise, disabilities, etc. So your support through Patreon is really what kept me up um, and... Um, kept me coming back to this canvas. So thank you to every patron who's joined. I really appreciate you guys very much. Uh, don't forget Portrait Studio is on sale and that's it. Thank you guys. I'll see you guys on Thursday, uh, sorry, Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Bye guys.